I think more could be said about how Rick interacts with his own fandom mm -hmm. as like a contrast to JK Rowling. Um, because like, I mean, A, he doesn't necessarily interact with this fandom too much, which mm -hmm. automatically is a level of protection from, mm -hmm. you know, like shoving a foot in his mouth like jk rowling seems to do mm -hmm. um but also the fans that he does interact with you you see very clearly where he's at how he feels about like <laughs> this thing that he's given people i feel like i see it when he talks to the kids because the kids were mm -hmm. fans before they were um before they were the actors in the show and so seeing him talk to them about like these are stories that those kids read and loved and that he wrote it's a very different interaction than i feel like you would ever see jk rowling ever have with anybody yeah like we we did our huge our big episode we did about like grooming and stuff and we talked a lot in there about how we feel like our responsibility to like if kids come to us because we make this sort of content for help of any sort we want to be able to help them and and we want to be able to be like a good resource for them and things like that and it, that's him on like a huge scale like <laughs> i sent you like that link to him writing those emails to the producers for the movies of the first movie that he he put those out on his own blog in 2018 um because he was just like fed up with life <laughs> with like those movies i'm sure at that point but yeah. every single one of those of those are like i see kids every day and they're all going to be really disappointed if you make this movie too old and too sexual and all these things and he's really upset about that he's like i want kids to be able to watch these movies and enjoy them and love the stories that they already love and that's mm -hmm. like you can see that in the show as well that that's like the focus of like i want the people who love these stories to love them to love this thing and like relive like the excitement of when we watch this stuff, we read these things for the first time, or like kids reading those books for the first time, to be able to see it and enjoy it. He like sat, sit there and like yells at those producers basically in a really nice way, but he's absolutely dragging them to, to hell in in like those letters being like, you're a horrible writer, you're a terrible at job, why are you doing this in my books? Stop it, please, before I kill myself. <laughs> it's basically those, and he's doing that because he feels like he has a responsibility to do that because he cares about the kids that love his stories and he wants them to be happy. And it's just like, he cares about his audience, like everyone in his audience, he cares about everybody. He wants everyone to be happy. His freaking wife is on social media and literally half of her account is just like debunking weird rumors that show up online. Like the other day, she, when people started talking about D23 stuff, Becky posted something about how like oh we don't have to it's funny we don't have to figure out contracts for actors until we actually have to start filming and i had that in the back of my mind like okay so they're probably not going to announce thalia even though i want them to they probably no. won't because she said that that's her way of trying to tell people like when the like spoiler sources posted all of those casting calls and it's particularly the allison one she posted something being like you know um you know, things may not like seem exactly how they're putting it. You'll understand and enjoy it when it comes on screen. We would never okay any of this stuff if we thought that it would hurt the story or the characters that you already love. And like, that's basically what they use that account for is to have like that. The other, <laughs> the other day on thread, she asked people, what kind of merch do you want to buy? She's just sitting there asking them, like, what kind of merch do you want us to make? <laughs> and it's, there's, like, such, like, a direct, like, talking back and forth between them and us, like, that it that it's just obvious respect between both sides goes back and forth. Like, we respect them a lot, and they also respect us a lot. And they generally want to know what we think about things and want to ask what we think about stuff so that they can improve it. Mm -hmm. Um like, we haven't talked about D23 stuff yet, but they brought, like, everybody <laughs> to this yeah, panel, everybody. which they have, like, never done before. And it was very obvious that they, like, brought all of the series regulars and brought anyone that they could involve because they said, like, during the panel, like, we're, like, a family and we wanted everyone to be able to come instead of just the main three kids. And that just so shows, like, they're even thinking about, like, we want all of the actors to feel like they're involved in all of this. 
-hmm. and that's just like basic levels of respect for people that would happen when the people that are like the driving force of this thing are two teachers yeah um that have kids that are neurodivergent it's very much like like you would imagine like your if we had good parents (laughs) are like parents helping everybody with advice that's basically what like rick and becky riordan are and they're the driving force of everything and so that's how everyone engages with each other like i think that's why like our grooming stuff had like really nice views and stuff on youtube for how small our youtube is and things like that because the fandom is very open to hearing new ideas and learning new things because the people in charge of it are two teachers mm-hmm. who want you to learn and grow and understand these things better it's not an environment where they're like this is the canon of the book and you can't think anything else and if you do you're a delusional weirdo who thinks incest is cool like yeah. nobody would it, they would never say that and they and because of that a lot of like the fights between like fan different groups of fans with different characters don't really happen like that because Rick Riordan would be sad if he saw you saying that and nobody wants to make him sad. Yeah. <laughs> write a full blog post about like, hey, <laughs> so here's what's going on with this character and here's what's going on with this character and that's why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it would be very yeah. cute. Instead but, like, there's people posting being like, I want Rachel to be black so that so that it doesn't become like a weird racial thing about which one Percy's gonna choose. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> um but like going back to the letter um so we'll have to remember to link it on youtube but like the there's two letters that required and wrote when the production of the movies was coming out one was before he read the script and one was after and the one after he read the script as you said is super scathing like there's lines in there like even if you were to ignore the book series as a whole the story sucks <laughs> and here's well, why like sucks. He's being, uh, once again, like an, uh, a, like a, a teacher because yeah. he lists off in like paragraphs, Annabeth is a problem and here is why. Percy is a problem and here is why. This is a problem and this is, and like six, par- and then sent them a 12 page document where he used his red pencil and like wrote out and like all of the notes he had of all the mistakes, they- 12 yeah. pages of no, yes, that like, that is, that is Rick. That's what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. um that's his like aries moonness coming out in full force that's what we do we tell people that they're ruining people's lives in a very blunt way but also in a way that surprises them a lot of the time because they don't expect us to be that honest about it but that's who he is he cares so much about his audience and the thing that he's made that Mm -hmm. well like when you i i i think that that is something that should make people who are afraid about the tv show feel better because like he fight he he would fight like disney out in a parking lot if they tried to make him change the story of any of his characters in a way that he didn't want them to like yeah i i i always remember like the article where he talked about when they were doing like the medusa stuff and disney wanted it to be like a wholesome thing where percy would like like his dad better and he's like no he finds out his dad raped somebody and yeah. that's what that's what percy finds out in that episode that his dad raped a woman and she is now like stuck with this way forever and is seen as like a villain when she's actually a nice person and things like that that's that that's that episode it could have been a completely different and disney wanted it to be different and i'm sure something like that happens in almost every episode and rick tells them no go fuck yourself because yeah, yeah. he did that when he had no control, like those, those emails that he sent the producers for um, the movies, he had no creative control. They didn't have to get his okay for anything. And he still sent them 12 pages of notes of things that they needed to fix anyway, even though he knew that he had no actual pull, he has that at Disney. So like, just like imagine the shit that he is saying to the writers and to Disney in general to get them to be like, no, this is my thing and you're not messing it up anymore. And like, it's obviously paid off because it's the biggest show that Disney Plus has had this entire year. It was funny watching the D23 stuff for all the Marvel things before they did their huge panel and just watching it and being like, we made more money than all of you. Like all of you. 
a writ like all of them every like marvel show combined had less viewers than percy jackson season one Jeez. and like culminated together was still less than what we made and so it's like they have every it shows that they have total control now like they can tell disney we want to send our entire cast <laughs> we want to send all the executive producers and rick riordan and all five series regulars and also like three or four more people <laughs> to this panel that you probably thought would be like four people <laughs> and they, and they have to do it because they've made them all this money and they're going to continue making more money but everything they do is like very with like the fans in mind like harry potter is is literally just a cash cow to further jk rowling trying to kill trans people that's all it's ever been since like the last book really and especially since cursed child yeah she doesn't care about the quality she doesn't care if it's good she doesn't care about any of that she just and she literally says that to to fans on twitter like i'm getting money every single month from the money that you give me because you like the thing that i made when i was younger before you knew what a horrible person i was and that's all she cares about she doesn't care if it's actually good she just wants it to come out so she can make more money mm -hmm. and then use that money to try to kill trans people and so like that's such a stark different like jk rowling says let's anything come out harry potter related anything at all it doesn't matter how bad it is because she doesn't care <laughs> yeah i think i only saw one of the magic beasts <laughs> i'm like I, I I like watching like, youtube videos of people yelling about those movies because of how bad they looked bad already but they were even bad in like a special way like that the like asian one asian person that's in the whole franchise turns into a snake and is like nagini the whole time or something i was just like and like so the whole time that's like an asian woman yeah that feels that feels really racist yeah Oof. yeah and that's yeah. like one of the things that happens <laughs> but um like rick said over and over again in his letters about the the movies that like he was the one talking to fans like they didn't know what the, they didn't have a pulse on the fandom fans were asking him about the movies he was trying to hype them up but didn't know much about them and so you just know nowadays with like how the show is going he's like oh this is actually a fun conversation yeah it's way more fun now and like he's cared like the great, the best example to show how much he cares about it all is in one of those letters, him literally telling them, like, he X'd out, like, the movie they were talking about, but he said, like, fans tell me I don't want them to change the story like they did in this movie. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about, like, the producers of that movie and how they adapted something else and nobody was happy about it. And so he's telling them straight to the producer's face, like, these are literally what my fans are telling me. I'm not, I'm not, like trying to act i'm not trying to kiss your ass i'm just telling you the truth of what my fans want and this is what they should get because i want to because they're my fans i want to make them happy um, yeah and it's, it's kind of funny too how many of those points we hit when we were watching the movie yes i was like oh so we agree on everything <laughs> because like, it very much is like this is nothing like the books this is nothing mm -hmm. for the fandom aging up these characters makes zero sense at all. And those are literally all the points he put. He's like, there's too much sex. And why are they teenagers? And stop it. <laughs> yeah, there's too much sex. Why are they teenagers? Why is Grover like a nymphomaniac? Why is Persephone like sex trafficking people with pearls that aren't even in Greek mythology? Like, I like how he ends it with this. This isn't even in Greek mythology. So like, why are you doing that? Why is there no Ares? Like, why is there no Ares fight at all? That doesn't make any sense. Why mm -hmm. not introduce Ares? Why go to like Nashville and all of these other places and have these other fights and not include things that actually happen in the book? Like, those are all like very valid questions that we ask, and I'm sure every everyone else who ever watched that move those movies ever asked, of like, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you put those things in there? That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, and yeah, I mean, he called it in that they ruined the storyline so much that the only way mm -hmm. to further the franchise would be to complete butchering it. And we saw with the second movie, not only did they butcher it, but they butchered it so bad, it would be virtually unrecognizable by a third movie yeah. had they done one. People are like fantasizing how amazing like the future seasons of the show is going to be because of how well they handled the first season. 
that's the kind of thing that you want to be happening to people fantasizing about how great it's going to be when everything starts going like off the wall with the storylines and stuff instead of like crying and hating their lives like we did when we watched the movies yeah and i mean i love that this this book stands up to the test that all of us have wanted all along. like at least millennials have been saying let's make a tv series out of our favorite books instead of a movie mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we've always had that mindset and it's actually working for this one